Um, I don't know about you, but Easter is one of my favorite seasons of the year. But in the 33 years that I've been ordained, I have never experienced one like this. Uh, this strange time in which we're celebrating our Easter season. Um, my favorite cartoon that I found from this period is this one, which I think captures something of Easter and our Zoom reality that we find ourselves in. If you haven't seen it before, just take a moment to look at it. It's quite fun. And uh, I think captures something of our reality at the moment. Well, we're gonna be thinking about leadership in lockdown. And a uh, <clears throat> handout was sent by email, so you might like to have that available to you uh, just to follow along if that's helpful. And of course, there are many places we could have focused our time, but we wanted to focus this webinar in particular on the leadership aspect of our roles. Of course, there are technical challenges, pastoral challenges, liturgical challenges we might face, but this particular webinar is gonna focus on the leadership aspect of our roles. And that's because there are some important challenges that we face. When we um, first heard about lockdown at CPS, we quickly identified that there were gonna be three stages to our response. And we talked about them in terms of short, medium, and long-term. So here's the short term. We reckoned it would be somewhere around four to eight weeks that we would need to uh, operate in this short-term response. We then identified a, a medium term would be somewhere between that eight weeks to three months period. And then longer term, three months onwards, and we need to be thinking about how we responded at that time scale. And uh, obviously the longer term will begin to kick in in that June, July period, but we're around this transition moment between short term, immediate response, and medium term uh, response to the crisis. And at this point of transition from short to medium term, we think there are probably two or dangers that we need to be careful about. Let me try and explain what they are. Uh, the first danger is this, the danger of getting stuck in what we've called crisis mode. The adrenaline is pumping, uh, we're far fighting problems, we're reacting to situations as they develop, uh, we're focused on the present and if you're a bit wired like me you might even have been enjoying something of the buzz of the last six or seven weeks. Certainly at CPS, we've had a ton of stuff to sort out. Uh, we initially had to work out how to get people, our whole office to home working. Uh, then we had to think through uh, some big decisions as Graham's already mentioned about our summer venture and Falcon program. Uh, then we had to think about furloughing. Uh, there were a whole bunch of uh, financial related things that we're beginning to need to address. So there was a, an immediate short term response we needed to engage with. And in all of that, we were also trying to weigh up how to balance a sense of hope, confidence and faith in our leadership with being honest, vulnerable and real. And how we as leaders at CPS uh, in, um, got the balance between those two things. So the first danger is to get stuck in that adrenaline pumping firefighting mode. Danger number two is that we succumb to a paralysis mode. After all the energy expanded of the last few weeks, we end up feeling exhausted, perhaps relieved, wondering what to do next, but without a lot of energy to do anything at all. Uh, we may feel overwhelmed with both the deluge of advice that's coming our way, and also the loss of certainty about anything much in the future. And their massive risk here is of inertia. We end up just settling for what is without thinking about uh, uh, without thinking about what might be and if we're not careful in response to this we'll spend all our time gardening or watching netflix or doing whatever it is that we most enjoy doing now if only it was that simple because of course the reality is it's likely that we will flip between these two things crisis mode and paralysis mode on a weekly basis perhaps even on a daily basis and we end up getting stuck in the short term and don't make a transition to the medium term engagement. Well, in a few moments, I want to offer you three things that might help us to make the transition. But before I go there, I want to take a little bit of a reality check because in our conversations with leaders around the country, we've heard a number of similar things about the current reality. And let me offer them to you and they may resonate with you. Here's the first, and it's related to the two dangers that I've already mentioned. 
it's an associated danger that we end up running ourselves into the ground. I heard one church leader say this week, if we were able to have a cup of coffee together and you leant across the table and said to me, how are things with you really? I'd probably cry. And actually our experience is there are quite a number of leaders out there feeling just like that. And I've known moments of that myself in the pressure of the last few weeks. The rev gauge is high and then we're in danger of running ourselves into the ground. Now, this webinar is not focused on our well-being or resilience, but I want to just recognize this reality. And if I may, sisters and brothers in Christ, offer you the penetrating words of Paul to the Ephesians in Acts, when he says, keep watch over the flock, which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer, and keep watch over yourself. Folks, this is a time to lean into our spiritual disciplines. This is a time to lean into exercise, healthy eating, rest, and fun. Reality check one, uh, it's very easy to end up running ourselves into the ground. Here's the second reality check. Uh, and this is about the nature of the change that we're in. Uh, we're in a season of what's called discontinuous change. Many of you will be aware of technical change. That's where you have a, uh, an A to B sort of situation. Uh, there's a problem to fix with one clear solution and you can create a plan to move from A to B. That's not the scenario we find ourselves in today. We're in what people call adaptive change, where it's A to many possible Bs. It's a puzzle. There are multiple possible solutions. And the reality is we won't be able to plan. We've just got to see how things emerge in the process of engaging with the change. Pivot seems to be the word of the season, doesn't it? And if only there was one pivot that one had to make, but in my experience, it seems much more like zigzags because we're having to make so many pivots in this season of discontinuous adaptive change. And in that sort of season, you can't necessarily plan long-term. So the little maxim that I'm trying to live by is this, think long-term, prepare medium-term, plan short term. Let me just say a bit more about those. Think long term. Long term thinking will be about how we might integrate being a church online into our future mission and ministry beyond lockdown. Will we combine Alpha online with doing Alpha physically present? How are we going to prepare ourselves for the long term effects of this crisis? Uh, Simon Barrington has spoken in a video that we'll send you a link to about some of the longer term things that are going to happen following this situation. Preparing medium term is thinking about how we reintegrate as lockdown is being released over the next few weeks and months. What do we want to continue? What do we want to go back to? Planning short term is thinking about in this next week, what are we going to do to move A to B to C? recognizing that it might actually be moving from E to H to Z. What are we going to do this week that might move us towards some of that medium and long-term stuff? And I think it's really helpful to expect in this season of adaptive change that we're going to get things wrong. None of us have been here before. We're never going to get it all perfectly right. Uh, a colleague said to me recently, there's never been a better time to make a mistake. Take the pressure off, folks. Uh, it is actually a season in which it's okay to get things wrong. Reality check number three. It's tough to keep the focus in the right place. One of the primary tasks of any leader is to allocate their time, energy and attention to the things which we need to give focus to. But in a crisis, that's really hard. Because in a crisis, it's easy to give our attention elsewhere, our focus elsewhere. We can become, for example, fear focused, consumed by the news and also by our own levels of anxiety. We can become unfocused, uh, unsure what to do. It can lead us to a place of either denying that anything needs to be done or uh, waiting and seeing approach to what develops and potentially waiting and hoping that things may return to normal. But that actually isn't a helpful place to be. 
ultimately as Christian leaders, what we're trying to be is God focused. And part of our job is to give attention to what God is wanting to say and do through us and in us and in our churches that we might be about blessing the world we're called to serve. What is God doing and how do we keep our focus on him? Now, of course, it's easy to say this, but in reality, it's really hard to live it out because in a time of crisis, we all are impacted ourselves and it's hard to keep the focus in the right place. Here's the last reality check that we are hearing. Uh, maybe this one might resonate with you. It's easy to get stuck in a negative triangle in response to the crisis. And the triangle looks like this. If we are in rescuer mode, rescuing people, rescuing situations and sorting things, um, that's okay possibly for a little while. But ultimately, if we continue in that mode for a long time, we end up getting worn out by it. And if we're not careful, we end up going to blame a mode where we blame the situation or blame others for what's going on. And if rescue and blame continue for a longer season, we can easily go victim. And when a leader goes victim, they go ineffective. Now, folks, uh, I've known something of this in my own experience of leadership over the last few weeks. I found myself blaming. I found myself, if I'm not careful, going victim. Instead, what we want to try and do is move out of that negative triangle to a positive triangle, which is about being a watch person, trying to discern what God is doing, what's going on in our culture, what's happening in our church, what's happening amongst our people, and what's happening in ourselves. Trying to listen and discern what's going on. And then trying to be an animator, an animator of the people of God, to help them give of their best in this season, to find their best in this season. We all know that it is, be it is better to give than to receive. And so part of our role as a church leader is to draw out of our people the very best they have to offer. And in all of that, to be a steward of what God has given us personally and what God has given to us as the church corporate, that we might be about his purposes in the world seeking to bless others and help them come to know the good news which is at the heart of our faith. So those are four reality checks. Let me pause us for a moment. Take a minute just to reflect, think, what's resonated with you so far? And if you've got pen and paper there you might just want to jot something down but we're just going to pause before we move on to the three things that might help us in the transition. Let's be still and think. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop up on the screen a little poll for you to join in with. You'll see it come up. There are three questions. Um, please don't take too long in answering them. Just go with your gut response. Which word most resonated with you? Uh, which of the four reality checks most resonates with you? And where are you thinking uh, about medium and long term? Just have a quick look. Fill it in on the screen. Take about a minute and go with your gut response. The words are obviously from the little exercise we did earlier on. And the four realities are the ones that I've just described. That's great. That's six of you have completed it already. Not that it's a competition. Keep going. That's about 25 of you. That's great. We're nearly at halfway. And that's 70% of you. And we're nearly there, just the last few coming in. Just a couple more. That 
that's great. Okay, just about to end the poll. Okay, I am going to end it there. Um, interested in the results? Okay, I'll pop them up on the screen. Here we go. Which word most resonated with you? Interesting array of words there that have been chosen. Interesting energized is the top one. Uh, which of the four reality checks most resonates with you? Interesting, tough to keep the focus in a healthy place. Yeah, certainly know something of that of myself. And uh, where are you at in terms of thinking about medium and long-term stuff? Well, the largest group have managed to give it a bit of thought, which is great, um, uh, and we've got to spread across them. Okay, um, let me uh, return us to the other screen and offer you three things that might help us as we make this transition from short to medium term. Here's the first. Uh, take time for praying and thinking and put that time in your diary. Folks, two of the most important things we do as leaders is we think and we pray about stuff. And guess what? In crisis, the two things which are most likely to go out of the window are our praying and our thinking. I was really struck by Pastor Agu saying last week, unprecedented times call for unprecedented prayer. And that was a wake up call for me really about my own prayer life. And I'm delighted that in our church last Thursday, we had 19 hours of prayer for COVID-19 situation and invited people to commit one hour of prayer during those 19 hours. It was a great thing to do as a church. If the YouGov survey is right, that only 9% of people want to return to how things were before COVID-19 came, we have a chance to pray and think about how we might influence the shape of our society today. And in the thinking space, there are probably two types of thinking that we need to do. We need to do the practical thinking about the practical stuff. Uh, how do we do a PCC online? How do we employ people in this season? How do I prioritize my time? How do we run an online inquiry course? How do I do a good funeral with only 10 people present? But we also need to do the theological thinking. How do we make sense of this current reality? What does it mean to be church when we can't physically gather together? What are the connection points to spiritual openness that we want to engage with? So how about an hour a week in the diary over the next few months to think and to pray? And my encouragement to us would be to go analog, uh, leave a screen, we're all on screens far too much at the moment, uh, get a piece of paper and a pen, try and find a quiet place if you can and take time to pray and to think about some of this medium and longer term stuff. Experience suggests that if it isn't in the diary, it won't happen. Here's the second thing we might do to help with this transition, and that's to have open and honest conversations with fellow leaders. Wiser decisions nearly always come about if more people are involved than just ourselves. And if you want a little tip for this, um, I, my little thing would be to suggest to do some scenario planning and to use the phrase, what if? What if we stay in some sort of lockdown uh, for another six months? What if we have more people engaging with our services online than normally physically come together? What if COVID-19 continues for another 18 months? What if our finances are reduced by 40% over the next year? What if we have missional opportunities now that we have not had before? Asking the what if questions are ways to engage others in thinking about this medium and longer term stuff. And so it's about finding fellow leaders to have those conversations with, maybe in your church, your PCC, church wardens, staff team, one or two others, maybe in your area, a deanery chapter or an ecumenical grouping. I was talking to one clergy person who said it's transformed her deanery chapter, this COVID situation, because they're thinking about stuff together in a way they haven't done before. Or maybe it's a network or a cell group that you're a part of in another context. Have open and honest conversations with others. And here's the third thing that we might do. Engage with what others are thinking. A lot's been written and said about the situation we find ourselves in, and frankly, it's a little overwhelming. I suppose the danger is we respond by burying our heads in the sand and engaging with none of it. 
So my encouragement is let's find good and helpful sources that we might draw from who will bring to us ideas and thinking that will enable our leadership to be wiser, clearer and more creative. Choose your sources carefully, but do engage with what others are thinking. And this Padlet board that we've set up and we're going to get you to use in a moment in the breakout rooms is a resource that we're going to leave up for several weeks. And it's a place where you can find all sorts of ideas that others are finding helpful to engage with what, is, what others are thinking. You'll find there are five columns and you can add by pressing the plus sign at the bottom of the column and add your ideas up there that others might benefit. There's already a huge amount of stuff of good stuff on that board. Well, let me end by asking the question, why is all this necessary? Uh, Ron Heifetz said this, leadership is both active and reflective. One has to alternate between participating and observing. In short term response, we have been in the active participative mode of leadership. But to transition to the medium and longer term stuff, we need to move into the more reflective and observing part of the leadership role. And it is, of course, both at the same time, but in order for us to transition well into this medium term situation and into the longer term, we'll need to up the reflective and observing part of leadership. This is about us moving from short to medium and longer term with this new reality. Let's not get stuck in crisis mode or succumb to paralysis mode. We may be in lockdown. God isn't. So let's lead well so that we may be open to all that God is doing at this time of unexpected problems and unprecedented opportunities.